Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we talking about today? I figure, because it's coming up pretty soon, we talk about the, the banner that NA is getting exclusively related to Nero Fest. It is the Revival Grand Nero Fest Summer 2023 Pickup Summit 2. That's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like, comment down below if you plan to actually summon for this. This did kind of come out of nowhere, and it has to... <laughs> Very popular featured 5 stars, so I'm kind of curious to see how many people are actually going to take the bait when we're this close to summer. And yeah, let's talk about it. So if you didn't know, this was announced during the uh, Live from Japan uh, a Fake Grand Order Fest 2023 special stream as one of the things that was actually exclusive to NA. It was one of the things they actually announced as opposed to the thing that they decided not to announce. It's a banner that's going to be featuring... Um, uh, Jolter over here, as well as uh, Raiko, and then a bunch of fours and threes that are also featured, such as Nursery Rhyme, Marie, uh, Castor Gill, Beowulf in the back, um, the old man Hector, and old man of steam, Babbage. It took me a bit, but I remembered <laughs> the name eventually. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be the banner. It's going to feature the Nero Fest CEs on it. And let's talk about the actual units. So I'm not going to go over the specific four stars. Bail, well, just very quickly, I'll say Nursery Rhyme, not the greatest of units. Needs a lot of buffs. Real shame. I have her NP5. Uh, I in the, Back in the day, I used to use her <laughs> as a farming. But that was back when my main tool for farming was Waver and nothing else. Uh, and she was fun to use for specific notes that actually required a caster AoE, but... Besides that, there wasn't really much going on with her, sadly. We have Marie, which is a, a writer, and she's another unit that I can't really much remember, mainly because I think there are better writers. Her original Noble Phantasm was really funny with its bad animation, but they patched that out, so they removed the only thing I really liked from it. I think they have buffed her, but I don't think she's uh, it's significant enough that she becomes a known name and stuff. I think it's mainly because her Noble Phantasm is, I think, quick. And back in the day, you only had... Hmm, let me see if I can actually look at it real quick. Because now I'm actually kind of curious. I know I said I wouldn't look at it, but I, I actually need to. Because Marie is such a NA staple for many, especially in the early days. Uh, let's see. So she has Timber of Regality. She has a charm one enemy for one turn and increases party attack for three turns. That was buffed, thankfully. This still kind of needs to be buffed, but to be fair, Grant Self Invincibility for three attacks is actually pretty nice. Uh, and then increase own mental debuffs. <laughs> okay, yeah, this can also be buffed. It's really weird. It's a heal. So she doesn't really have anything. Oh, there you go. She has a five hit quick. And then when it's buffed up, deals damage to all enemies, increases party critical damage, removes party's debuffs. It's not bad, but it's really weird to have like a support style NP when it's supposed to be damaged, so I don't really think she's used very much for looping because she has no way to give herself uh, NP gauge and she has no way to get NP gain, and that's kind of a real killer, especially when it comes to um, quick units if you don't have any of those. But anyway, I digress. I wanted to look at that just because Marie is so tied to the NA server. Um, Caster Gill, from what I remember, is still good to okay. Uh, he can definitely be used. And I don't think I've mentioned Beowulf, but Beowulf is certainly a unit that I think Carlos really wants because he's a big fan of Beowulf. So if you're Carlos, hopefully you're not summoning on here because it's actually very hard to get any of the featured force. <laughs> it's very hard when there's like two featured uh, four stars on a banner and this has four featured four stars. You ain't getting any of these. If you're summoning for one of these dudes, you may as well not even bother summoning on this. But anyway, let's talk about Jalter and Mama Raiko over here. So, we'll start with Jalter. We have, here we go, Jem the Arc Alter, well, better known as Jalter. She's going to be starring in Fate Samurai, which I assume in the story will explain how uh, she can actually exist. Because she is, of course, an OC of Gils the Reyes, or Jails the Reyes, depending on how you want to say it. But I always call it Gils, so I'm going to call him Gils. She is two Buster, two Arts, one Quick. Her first skill is Self Modification EX, increases on crit damage for 3 turns, increases on crit star absorption rate for 3 turns, 50% and 800% absorption. Second skill is Dragon Witch EX, increases party's attack for 3 turns, and increases the attack of Dragon Allies for 3 turns, 20% and 
And the third skill is Ephemeral Dream A increases on Buster performance for one turn, grants self invincibility for one turn, deals a thousand damage without killing to self demerit, and it's 50% up Buster, and it's for one turn. Uh, passive skills are Avenger B, Oblivion Correction A, and Self Replenishment Magic A. Third skill is a anti Avenger attack damage aptitude, which increases on attack against the Avengers. And her noble phantasm has been strengthened up to rank EX. Le. Le Grandement de la Haine. Roar, or rage of mine. It is a 10 hit buster. Deals damage to one enemy. Inflicts buff block status for to them for one time. And gain 30 crit stars. And the damage is 800% at level 1. It is 12,000 at level 5. And the over for charge effect is inflict curse for 5 turns to them. Uh, 500 curse at charge level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, 2,500. Okay, let me see, what was it back here? Oh, okay, so the crit start gain is what, the, and the damage is really all that they gained. Yeah, the curse amount stayed the same. Okay, so let's talk about Jolter. So when Jolter released, for a very long time, Jolter was kind of the de facto single target buster gorilla for lack of a better term she, especially with merlin if you had jolter and you had merlin you could basically take down any um anything <laughs> the same could be said with herc and the same could be said with um uh cool alter but the difference is, is that of course they're berserkers so they were always taking bonus damage against a lot of things and because she was avenger at that time there wasn't really a lot of ways to hurt avengers so even though she um, mainly did bonus damage to rulers and berserkers. It didn't matter because she had neutral damage to all of them and she took neutral from them, only really taking mo damage from, I think, berserkers at that time until eventually they added uh, Moon Cancer and then that let them have the triangle that we have now, which is uh, rulers hurt Moon Cancer, Moon Cancer hurts Avengers, and Avengers hurt rulers. Point is... Um, since, because she was so good, they've never actually bothered to buff her outside of her Noble Phantasm, and that's basically been it. And to be fair, this Noble Phantasm is very nice, especially for a Buster unit to have gained 30 crit stars. And it would be really nice to actually use her with, uh, Vich and potentially Oberon, but the problem is, is that, as you can see here, she doesn't really have a way to gain NP, which is something that is due to her being a very old unit. So I definitely see, I still think she's extremely good and you can still very usable. She's not like in a dire straits, like, if you want to see dire straits, you should look at some of the other Avengers that have been released in the game. Uh, Agrimanu, it doesn't really, isn't fair because he's uh, supposed to be bad. Haysian Lobo, I think, is still <laughs> very bad, even with this buff to Monstrous. I mean, this is nice, but he's not there. He needs help. He needs all the help that he can get. Uh, Gorgon is, I think, in a similar situation. Celery is actually pretty good. Demon King Nobunaga took multiple buffs to get where she is. Space Ishtar is Space Ishtar. Um, Ushi Alter. I actually think she's... I actually don't know the consensus. I have Ushi Alter, but I actually don't know what other people feel. Kama is actually insanely good. Actually, now that I'm looking at some of this, I can understand why some people want <laughs> Jolter to get buffed. Maybe I've disproven my thing. But in general, I think for the time that she was released, she's still a very usable servant. And, like I said, she is getting Fate Samurai. Uh, she is going to be in Fate Samurai, so it's pretty likely when September comes around and that game releases, she gets some kind of a strengthen to one of her skills. If I were to assume which one she would get, I think it would probably be this one, where it, the Buster performance would last for maybe three turns, and she maybe gains some kind of NP. Who knows? I don't know if they want to ch like chain. No, but what's her nuts is is chain to. Yeah, they could definitely do it. They can definitely do it. I'm trying to think of w whether or not they would want to tie an invincibility to a 50% charger, and they've done that in the past already. So it doesn't really matter. They can definitely do it, and they could probably also get rid of this deal a thousand damage to to herself. I don't think it's really necessary anymore. If they really wanted to hone her in, they could definitely keep this at one turn and then just give her 50% NP or if they want to make this three turns and then only give her 30% I think that'd probably work out too but that's only things that I'm guessing I don't actually have Jolter which is a damn shame so I don't know what she would specifically need so if you have any idea what she needs you can feel free to tell me 
But I assume if she just gets some kind of NB gauge or way to get more attack, she would be perfectly fine. And yeah. So yeah, like I said, Jolter, super well-liked unit. Fantastic Spiritan dress right here as well. And uh, in general, I understand why they would make a banner with her on it. So let's go on to the second unit, which is Reiko. The other five star. Oh man, I can't believe that she's coming back so soon. Reiko. She is two busters, two arts, one quick. I should have really looked at her. Someone's going to bring it up if I don't bring it up, so I have to actually go back because <laughs> I forgot to look at for for busters. It's very important. You need to look at their skill kill down. So five on first skill, five on second skill. That's kind of crazy. Six on third skill. For the time she was released, that's pretty good. Considering a lot of other units have like eight turn cooldowns, especially when it comes tied to an invincibility. I've seen some units get like eight turn cooldowns for an invincibility and a slight attack upgrade. So. Now, what is our Juna Alter? Not our Juna Alters, but our Juna's original one. I think that was the crazier one. That, from what I can remember. Uh, where are you, Arjuna? There you are. I think they eventually buffed this, so it wasn't this. Uh, yeah, Hero of the Endowed. For a 25% NP charge, some crit stars, and the ability to heal. This has a 10 turn cooldown. <laughs> and I think they eventually buffed it where it's 8. But to be fair, he is getting a little bit more. But 8, that's insane. Oh, man. And it still is only 25% charge. This charge own MP gauge by 10% for every turn isn't the greatest in the world. It is nice, but unfortunately being 25% kind of nullifies you a lot when it comes to looping and stuff like that. It's a very annoying amount. 30% is usually the sweet spot for a lot of comps. But anyway, I digress. That's uh, Jolter's uh, cool skill cooldowns. Let's go over to Raika. Uh, she's a Berserker, one quick, two arts, two buster. First skill, which has been buffed. Genji Clan Martial Arts Discipline EX increases on crit star absorption for three turns. 6,000 absorption, crit damage is 60% for three turns, and the cooldown is a five. Her second skill, which has been buffed, is the Thunder God Manifestation. Increases on buster performance for three turns. Grants self evasion for one turn. Charges on MP gauge. See, this is the kind of thing. If Jolter did actually did this have thirty percent? Yeah. If Jolter, this is what I would expect Jolter to kind of get. To be honest, like the like, cause this is kind of similar, except for she gets fifty percent instead of thirty percent. So that's why in my mind they might still keep it at one turn if it's 50%. They're really weird in particular when it comes to that, but whatever. She increases his own buster performance for three turns, grants self-evasion for one turn, and charges on MP gauge, and this is brand new. This is just what they got over in JP, which makes her really good, and this is a skill to cooldown of six. Previously, this is what it was. And the third skill is the Mystery Killer A. Increases own damage against demonic enemies for three turns. Increases own damage against servant enemies with the earth or sky attribute for three turns. And this excludes demi servants and pseudo servants except Setonia. And versus demonic and uh, the earth or sky servants, it is 50%. So, and a cooldown of six. Magic resistance D, madness enhancement, mad enhancement EX, writing A, uh, and divinity C is her passive skills. Her append skill for the third one is an anti-assassin critical attack chance resistance, which increases own critical attack chance resistance against assassins, in case you ever are just fighting assassins with her. And her noble phantasm, which is rank A, which has also been strengthened. That's right, she's one away from getting a full-on rework of stuff. Uh, seven hit noble phantasm buster deals damage to all enemies, reduces their critical attack chance by 20% for three turns. The damage is 400% in level 1, and all the way to level 5, it is 600%. And then the increase to crit star generation rate is the overcharge effect. It is 100% at level 1, uh, overcharge level 1, and if you get it all the way to overcharge level 5, it is 300%. So it increases at intervals of 50% each time. So, that's Ryko. Um, I'm real glad that I was away in Vegas and could not talk about this banner, because uh, originally... Raiko's in this weird spot that because Arjuna Altar exists, it's very hard for a lot of Buster Servants, uh, Berserker AoE specifically, <clears throat> to 
to kind of compete because he's very like strong even the one that a lot of people like to use over him which is morgan um he still out damages her they're using her more for the utility and a lot of the extra bonus stuff that she can do where she can kind of party support a lot of others where Arjuna Alter is all about, I make the big damage and I hit, boom, easy. Um, and he also has, a, uh, he has really everything. And Raiko, for the longest time, was missing a lot of that. She was having, they've kind of buffed her in a lot of ways because for the longest time, similar to Jolter, she was the number one buster um, AoE servant for Berserkers. And it was hard to imagine them ever, like, making a better unit than her and then they did and then it turned out she's nowhere in close to competing with him to be fair almost no berserker who is also buster comes close to <laughs> arjuna alter the only one that are on his similar plane which is like an s tier type plane is morgan i feel like probably nowadays with post this buff, I would say she's probably really close. She's not um, 100% there. I think this is something I saw that someone said, so don't take my word as gospel. But she's basically like one more buff away. She just doesn't have the damage that he does at the moment. But they think it's just like literally if she if the next third skill gives a 30% just attack boost of some kind, she should be finally either on par or out damaging Arjuna Alter. But by that point, I would assume they would also figure out a way to finally buff Arjuna Alter. Because he's too well-liked for them to not keep him. Actually, who knows? Merlin never gets a buff, and I don't think he's ever getting a buff. So, maybe... We'll see. It's, it kind of depends when it comes to popular servants. Either they're Raiko, and they constantly buff him, because they know a lot of people love Raiko, and a lot of people summon for Raiko. Or... I guess if you're a man... Huh? It ain't that about a bitch. <laughs> if you're a man, they'll have second doubts about buffing you. But if you're a woman, they got no qualms about it at all. Of course, that completely forgets that Jolter is a woman and they haven't really buffed her that much. So what do I know? Maybe I'm just full of shit. Anyway, uh, Raikou's really good right now. That was, is that was my assumption right, and my feeling for it. And a lot of that is probably coming from the specific bias that I feel towards Raikou. In that if I had Raiko now, even though I have Arjuna Alter and I'm grinding Miro Fest like like crazy, specifically so I can get Arjuna Alter's skills all to 10, I have one multi saved up that I can say for specific, for specific reasons I can use this on Raiko. If I pull Raiko, all of that is going out the window. <laughs> and I am immediately switching to her. It is, uh, you know, at some point, you really just want to use the units that you like in Fago. And Raiko, thankfully, has been received enough buffs that even though she's not at the pinnacle, she's not giving the support that Morgan gives, she's not doing the damage that Arjuna Alter gives, but it doesn't matter because this is a PvE game and she still is killing a lot of dudes. If two units are overkilling and one is overkilling by two million, uh, my bad, not two million, three billion, and the next one is overkilling by two billion... It's kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah, he's better, but also both of these dudes are dealing so much that why, why do I care? The other thing that is kind of a bummer that she's missing is that she still does not have any guts, which is very unfortunate when it comes to a berserker, because that means they just immediately die. So there's definitely some things that would still, she'll always have a clear disadvantage, even if she does outpower him. Um, there'll always be the safe. Well, well, you know, if things go bad, Arjuna Alter can survive. And though she does have the ability here to reduce their critical attack chance, she'll still likely take a lot of damage. So, <sighs> that's the banner. I really like Raiko. I can understand going for her, even with Summer all around the horizon. It's going to be very tough. It's very annoying that they've released her at the time that they've released her. Um... And man, this must be, must be what it feels like to play JP. Because I'm like experiencing the idea of them releasing a banner. And you know the good things are coming up in a lot of ways. And you're just kind of going like, but damn, I really want this unit. This is just kind of cruel. And there's no two years of me saving. The good thing is that if I actually wait a little bit longer, I can't wait till the next Ryko banner. Because like I said, she's fairly popular. She comes back a lot. Same thing kind of goes with Jolter. So now I'm at the point, should you summon... 
if you really care about any of the summer units that are coming up, or you really care about Ilya, which is also coming up, I would suggest you probably skip for now. The reason isn't that I don't think that the units are worth getting, I just think that the units are going to have a lot more banners coming up, so you're probably fine. Let me hold up, let me pause and look when the next J Jolter banner is going to be up. One moment. Okay, I'm back. And as you can sign, kind of say, see here over on the JP side of the game, she actually doesn't come back until at least 2023. But she and some of these are GSSRs, but the ones that aren't GSSR, one, two, three. This is three. Three banners all coming in, and like, this is also 2022, so that would be over here. If I look over here, this would be on the 5th, May. So let's assume that without anything else being introduced early to... Whoa, what the hell? Uh, 25 million. Okay, I have to look at 25 million. There it is. Um, summon campaign. Summon two. There it is. So again, this would be the next time that you would, in theory, be able to summon for her. And then like, that's, of course, not accounting for if NA has any surprise banners along the way. And I assume that because she is popular, NA wouldn't mind. Like, I, <laughs> they could throw her in the, for Thanksgiving and everyone would be like, oh, damn, Jolter's back, I guess. It's kind of crazy like that. And I think Raiko's similar in the same way, where they're very popular units. You don't have to worry about them coming up. So if you're someone who's like, oh, damn, I really want Summer and or Ilya, whichever one, and you're going like, ah, oh, but I really like both of these units, you can literally look up to the future and see what banners are coming out because of how popular they are. I guarantee you, you can find one and you can start saving then, and I think that's the best way to go for it. If you're someone who believes in the, uh, you don't tell me what to do, I'm gonna summon, then there you go. Good luck to you. I wish you the best of luck, my man. Or, and or woman. And yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, I have a bunch of videos coming up uh, because I actually came back and I was able to record a bunch. So go ahead and enjoy them. Um, I'm slowly going through the challenge quest in Nerofest with my brother and those have been really fun to record. So I suggest watching them if you have the time for them because uh, they're very silly. We did like a draft style thing and it ends up being very fun. I can't wait till you see the one for the Hassan fight for the early Nerofests. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the early Nero Fests are kind of uh, easy <laughs> because they were a different type of the game. But don't worry, we've made it <laughs> you, we've made it harder on ourselves by complete accident by not looking up what the fights were and just going by memory. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much. As always, leave a like, comment, uh, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace.